Hi, my name is Hang Ho and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Arizona College of Medicine. The topic I'll be presenting today is cleft lip and cleft palate. My basic science question on this topic is to what extent does cleft lip and palate development depend on genetics and to what extent does it depend on environmental factors? My clinical question on this topic is what are the current treatment options available for treating this condition? My societal question on this topic is what are some of the factors affecting accessibility of treatment for this condition. My answer to my basic science question is that cleft lip and cleft palate is a multifactorial condition that has both genetic and environmental factors that contribute to its development. A genetic component is suggested by unequal gender incidence. For example, males um, have greater incidence of cleft lip than females, and conversely, females have greater incidence of cleft lip than males. Also, a genetic component is suggested by an increasing incidence with increasing maternal age increased recurrence rates in families with an affected child, and differences in prevalence between different ethnicities. Recent studies have demonstrated that variation of the IRF gene is also strongly correlated to the development of cleft lip and palate. Environmental factors are also known to have an effect. Exposure to teratogens like phenobarbital and diphenylhydantoin have been demonstrated to increase the risk of cleft palate. Smoking has been shown to increase the incidence of cleft lip and palate by 50%. Some studies have also demonstrated that folic acid supplementation during early pregnancy can reduce the incidence of cleft lip and palate. Definitive repair of a cleft lip or palate is surgical. Um, repair of a cleft lip can be performed from one to four months of age. Repair of a cleft palate is usually performed between five and 15 months of age. Additional surgeries to improve the cosmetic appearance of the scars may also need to be performed. Surgeries can also be performed to fix some of the complications that can occur with cleft lip and palate. For example, abnormalities with the hearing system or the ears. Patients with cleft lip and palate may also have difficulty with speech or hearing or coping with repeated medical procedures. Often it's important to refer these patients to a speech pathologist, an audiologist, or a trained social worker or psychologist to help them cope with these problems. Some of the factors that affect accessibility of surgical repair for cleft lip and palate include cost, um, availability of facilities and trained personnel to perform the procedure, and health literacy on the topic on behalf of the patient. The cost of surgery can be prohibitive, especially in developing countries with a low per capita income. For example, charitable organizations like Operation Smile and Smile Train offer the, the surgery for about $240 um, per case. However, in countries like India, where the annual per capita income is approximately $1,500, that $240 is still a significant portion of that person's income that year. There are several other significant barriers to access aside from cost. Patients may live in an area without ready access to the infrastructure necessary to perform surgery or without a surgeon trained to do reconstructive work available. Patients may live too far from an urban center with the necessary personnel and supplies to perform the surgery, and they may lack knowledge that a surgical repair is possible. Some patients avoid repair because they are unwilling to undergo surgery. After investigating this topic, I developed some ending questions for further investigation. My basic science question is, how does the molecular signaling during development contribute to the formation of cleft lip and palate and the severity of the condition when it occurs? My clinical question is, what are the new types of treatments being developed for cleft lip and palate repair? My societal question is, to what extent does surgical repair affect the psychosocial problems that these patients face?